After Watson and Crick presented the double helix model of DNA, a major question still remained. How does DNA replication actually occur at the molecular level? Three models for DNA replication were proposed, conservative, semi-conservative, and dispersive. In the conservative model, the two parental DNA strands remain together during replication so that one progeny molecule contains both parental DNA strands and the other progeny molecule contains only newly synthesized DNA. In the semi-conservative model, the two parental DNA strands separate and each of those strands then serves as a template for the synthesis of a new DNA strand. The result is two DNA double helices, both of which consist of one parental and one new strand. The dispersive model proposed that the parental double helix is broken into double-stranded DNA segments that, as in the conservative model, act as templates for the synthesis of new double helix molecules. The segments then reassemble into complete DNA double helices, each with parental and new DNA segments interspersed. The three models predicted different distributions of parent and new DNA after replication, so if you could distinguish between the two in the progeny DNA, only one model would be consistent with the results. Matthew Messelson and Frank Stahl developed a way to distinguish these molecules by using a heavy isotope of nitrogen known as 15N. Replacing the normal form of nitrogen in the bases of DNA with 15N produces a DNA that is physically heavier than normal DNA. If the parental DNA contains 15N, while the progeny DNA contains the normal 14N isotope, different combinations of the two types of DNA will have different densities. To label the DNA, the scientists first cultured bacteria in a growth medium containing a 15N labeled ammonium salt. All the DNA made in the medium contained the heavy 15N. They then shifted the bacteria to growth medium containing the normal 14N isotope, so all new DNA made after the shift was of normal density. Samples of the culture were taken at different times corresponding to replication cycle 0, just at the time of the shift, 1, and 2. DNA was extracted from each sample and its density was determined. To analyze the density of the DNA, the DNA samples were mixed with cesium chloride and spun in an ultracentrifuge. As the tubes spin, a linear concentration gradient of cesium chloride forms with the lightest density at the top and the heaviest density at the bottom. At the same time, the DNA comes to equilibrium in the gradient where its density equals the density of the surrounding cesium chloride. If all the DNA molecules in the sample are of the same density, a single band of DNA results. If the DNA molecules in the sample have two different densities, two bands of DNA result. The position of the bands in the tube indicates the density of the DNA molecules in the sample. After one replication cycle, Messelson and Stahl found that the DNA was all of intermediate density. The conservative model predicted that, after the first replication cycle, there would be equal amounts of heavy-heavy and light-light DNA, which would result in two bands of DNA in the gradient. So that model could be ruled out. The semi-conservative and dispersive models both predicted combinations of parent and progeny DNA, which would result in one band of intermediate density, so more analysis was required. To do this, the scientists looked at the gradient of the sample taken after the second replication. Two bands of DNA were seen, one of intermediate density and one of light density. The dispersive model predicted that after the second replication cycle, there would be four DNA molecules, all of which contain the same proportions of light and heavy DNA. This would result in only one band of DNA in the sample, at a density between the intermediate and light density bands. However, since two bands were seen, this model could be ruled out as well. The semi-conservative model predicted that the second replication would produce four molecules, two of which contain two light strands and two of which contain one heavy and one light strand. This would result in two bands in the gradient, one of intermediate density and one of light density. 
This prediction matched the experimental results, providing compelling evidence that the semi-conservative model was the correct model of DNA replication. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, The BioWay on YouTube, and press the bell icon so that you will never miss another update from my channel. Thank you.